that you should recognize death for its ability to get you off your ass right now. Welcome to the woodshed. Hey friends, welcome to another edition of the woodshed. We're in the lobby of CPB and we've got um, some awesome guests and some, a lot to talk about. We've got Tim Parr and uh, Dustin Robertson from uh, Caddis. And, and uh, we're going to talk about all sorts of stuff. Tim is a, a serial entrepreneur. I hate to use that phrase on you, but it's a little bit true. He launched a, a uh, mountain bike clothing company called Swobo, which if you're a mountain biker, you know it was a shit. And, um, and I remember it fondly. You want to start that up again? Uh, <laughs> next question. He made me promise not to say that. Um, <laughs> And uh, uh, after that, he sold that to Santa Cruz Bicycles and, um, and uh, learned to be a, uh, a musician, took up an instrument, learned to play uh, bluegrass, correct? That's correct. And got good enough that you played festivals and shit. Yep. Toured from Colorado West. I could spend the whole show just talking about that because it's fucking mind-blowing. Well, that was... Uh... Yeah, that that <laughs> spawned this company actually. Really, that was that was a catalyst. I have to say. So because it's a good, so that's a that's a good segue. Um, uh, Dustin, I don't know, I don't have any bio on you. Can oh, you man. just fill us <laughs> in a little my, bit about my, my personal assistant <laughs> instead of my bio? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's up. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm just a kid that was born in the '70s, grew up in the '80s, like punk rock, and uh, started my career on the internet. So in the 90s, yeah, um, we started selling avalanche beacons online, and uh, that became backcountry.com. And you became backcountry.com. Yeah, that was wow. my that was my lucky stroke of genius. That's great. And it was yeah, just a great learning experience and building a brand that was just 100 percent online and never had any physical presence. And then we somehow were able to make it connect with people and resonate with who they wanted to be. And all of a sudden, the stickers were on everybody's car. Yeah. No, it's, it's a I'll never great, to great story. That. Still, great story. Yeah, yeah, and it's it, like I love it because it's scrappy. Just to your point, like there was the funded, you know, bunch of dot coms, mm -hmm. and then they almost all disappeared overnight. And then these other scrappy folks survived because they were already in the mode of survival, and and you won the day. So yeah, kudos was, on that. It was awesome. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And I met Tim during that time, and yeah, I tried to get him to start another bike company. And, we did Caddis instead. You know, I, I should say I'm a advisor. I have been an advisor for Caddis, and I'm about to. Did, did, I don't think I did. I send you the check. I think I did. I think I just sent the check, so I'm an investor as well. TBD, TBD oh, yeah. on the check. Okay, <laughs> it's in the mail. Yeah, we can't confirm or deny. <laughs> it's in the mail. These check sending statements. So full transparency, and uh, and I, <clears throat> you know, ran into the brand and and really loved what you're doing. And what's interesting about the brand, just to cut to the chase mm -hmm. and i'd like to know like that genesis moment but this brand is a brand that celebrates aging correct and that is what are the other brands out there that celebrate aging viagra <laughs> i don't know if it celebrates it it deals with it um propecia uh, propecia rogaine charles schwab i don't think there are any like there's none that really celebrate if you if you really want to get uh, really what we're what we're doing I always challenged people to name one lifestyle brand mm -hmm. that specifically targets people over 40 I mean I mean if you think of the world that we grew up in you know we we birthed action sports right and uh, through that process was music art sports and uh, we're we're all a byproduct of that whether we really know it or don't um i'm still convinced a lot of modern day advertising can be linked back to thrasher magazine mid oh absolutely mid 1980s yeah so uh why not get a brand that uh that recognizes those patterns and sell health and wellness and you're starting with Glasses, readers, reading glasses. reading glasses, because you can't see shit. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a, it's a great. So this idea of, I mean, it's to me, it's funny. Like, what brands have done this? None. 
So it's either a great idea or it's a really bad idea. I, so, you guys must. So <laughs> early, early on, that. like two, three years ago, I, I had a call uh, with Andy Latz yeah. from Nixon. And through uh, mutual friends of ours, you know, he agreed to talk to me. And, and he says, okay, this has been really frustrating for me. I'm like, why? He goes, I can't figure out if this is the stupidest idea I've ever heard yeah. or the best idea I've ever heard. He goes, I still don't know. I feel that way. Even mm-hmm. now, I, you know, I'm obviously advising, investing. I'm in, right? And but an I don't ambassador, know. too, I might and add. It, well, thank you for saying that. I don't know that I could really be an ambassador. I don't know what no, that you mean. No, you, you are. Okay. All right. It's technically called an architect and custodian. Okay. Uh-huh. So. Um, so here's a pair of the glasses. I don't know. You know, we can zoom in on them, but uh, the every time I have them on or have them out, somebody comments, and that was really the kicker for me. Was over time, just never not getting a reaction, and 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 your your premise is essentially don't give up on life. Just because you're aging, mm-hmm. in a way, you have an opportunity. You have a window to give up. Right. There's yeah. two doors at, at 45 or 50, maybe. Mm-hmm. And like, which door are you going to take? And one is Caddis. Right. And the other is what? Nap. Yeah. Just <laughs> just uh, napping. Yeah. Just what we say. I'm just going to go have a nice meal. Yeah. And that's like sport. See, I think so. Let, we'll switch gears a little bit out of the out of the company specifically and just the space of, of age and aging in our culture. Whoa, it's going big now. <laughs> the the um and in 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 advertising it advertising is known for being an ageist industry mm-hmm. more so than many but i think many are uh as you were talking i was thinking you know this idea wouldn't have worked 10 years ago it definitely wouldn't have worked 20 years ago correct um it it might have worked in Japan 20 years ago, but it wouldn't have worked in the U.S. 20 years ago. Absolutely. Different cultures appreciate the you know age and aging in different ways. And U.S. culture has been infamous for its celebration of youth culture, period. Yep. Right. But I do feel like I think your timing might be great because I think there's a thing happening to the zeitgeist right now, in part because of the composition of, uh, you know, having boomers which are such a huge generation, Mm -hmm. right? And then the next generation aging into this space, it sort of forces it economically to matter Mm -hmm. um, and and is forcing this sort of cultural change. And I think you're like maybe in just the right space for it. The, the The other, as I research this just a little bit, just where did it come from, our ageist mentality? And... Because you could say it came from advertising and probably came from advertising, mm-hmm. probably came from... It's from, your fault. Yeah, probably came from, <laughs> from me, uh, mostly me, I, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, um, the press. But it also came from science. Um, the earliest uh, examinations of the brain saw that as you aged, your brain deteriorated. And I think they, that, that physical uh, manifestation and looking at that physical manifestation created this notion that over time you can't think the way you can think when you're young. Um, And now the most recent science is showing that it's actually not that cut and dry, that the brain certainly changes and parts of it essentially die. Pathways go away. But depending on your approach and what you've done with your life, your cognitive abilities don't necessarily match at all what physically is happening to the the brain itself. Um, So... I just think for me, that was really fascinating to, to think about that arc and why it would be where now we're in a moment where, you know what, we're going to be OK with aging. We're going to value it and we're going to make this big transition, which I which I think we're making. But it's fucking painful. That's why it's so awesome. Yeah. yeah I like the way you think. I, gotta say. <laughs> I think a little bit of it, too, is uh, we're back to we're from action sports and that's how we grew up. And yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, those are still the brands I resonate with now, but they only talk about youth. They would never talk about being awesome at 40. Right. You know, even though Steve Caballero and Tony Hawk are still out there being awesome, 
you know, they're not held up in the Vans ads. So. They're not. No, they're not. But there is sort of an acknowledgement of those guys and their place in it, which is different and didn't exist in the day as well. Yeah. Right. So I think there's a I agree with the uh, with the with the physiology that you're describing. Right. And I've read a bunch about this and uh, there's there's fascinating studies. Uh, about the brain and age and how you can uh, reverse some, right. some, some yeah. aspects of it. Yeah. But uh, I also like the socio part of what we're going after. Mm -hmm. And for me, when, um, when I... Well, the facts haven't changed. The, you know, science has sort of changed in its point of view, right. but the facts haven't changed. No. And so... But what has the changed? Culture, right. right. Exactly. So I believe like when you had the 60s and, and into the 70s, you know, you had the hippies, you know, don't trust anyone over the age of. But you got to but you got to realize how big that generation was. So there, you had hippies and you that was all boomers. That's right. So an enormous amount of the population was under 30. And and so that forced that that was that was really the first time in the U.S. Mm -hmm. that super young culture became the dominant culture. Well, it caused a rift. I mean, there was so, yeah, it was there was a hard line in the sand. Yeah. So what I think that's interesting now, and they called that the generation gap. Did they really? remember that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, well, there's two things. One, who better to define the aging movement? than the people that created the youth movement. We should get some young people to define it for us. Okay. Because so, they're so creative. Well, that's my other point, <laughs> is that maybe we shouldn't be so vain to think that this is our moment. Mm. Maybe this moment is actually made available because of the millennials' attitude towards us. I totally agree with that. Fist bump. It just seems different. It seems different than like our relationship with our generation prior and yes. this generation and the relationship that they have with us. That's right. It does seem different. Right. So maybe it's it's a it's a it's somewhat of a perfect storm. So so in this ad business, you're 45, you have a big job, you get laid off mm. and man, trying to get another big job in this business really really tough it's famously tough would would you hire what would be your attitude if you if you were if you were looking for people and and uh would you would you be apt to hire people in their 50s uh i don't think apt's the right word i think that's who we, who we want <laughs> in your business yeah. or but in but if you had this you're place, an ad agency yeah because you've been in the ad game too yes you've done it all <laughs> Um, well, yeah, because experience matters. Yeah. And, you know, when the shit hits the fan, it, I want someone who's seen it a few times over. It's funny because experience matters, but it also can be wrong. Like just because you've seen a thing and then you decide, oh, that's the way these things go. So that you need the, you need both. You need that naivete. Right. And I think it, I don't know whether you find this in your own life. I find that. I actively have to fight off sometimes my experience. Oh, right. Do you ever find that? You have it, to re relearn the mistakes in the past and relearn the successes because how you do it now is different. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and just and just like, well, I have this assumption. And I've got to like, <clears throat> you know what? That was true for me at one point. Is it still like, you know, and if you, it, it's almost like a, a it's not almost, it's very much a, a, a cognitive process that, it's a checklist. Like, am I full of shit on this? And I don't think, and I think that it's dangerous if you do age and you don't question what's experience that's relevant and what's experience that's no longer relevant anytime you're drawing on experience. And that's maybe what part of what can keep you fresh. Like a brand like Caddis is all about being fresh, right? Well, yeah. I was, to go back on your point that you just made, yeah, uh, I call that just knowing too much. Yeah. And it's, it's what, unconsciously competent. Totally. So and and the stages of learning and you have to continually go back to unconsciously in, incompetent. Yeah. The and, beginner's mindset. Yeah. Even though you've got all this experience, if you can then also bring the beginner's mind, 
which is super insanely potent. important. Yeah. And when we were talking earlier about startups um, later in life, yeah, when, when you're not 25, yeah, but when you're 45 or 50, that's what you have to deal with because you know too much. So your 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 boxes that you need to check, yeah, in order to get off your ass, is too long. Uh, when you're 25, you just come out guns a blazing. And you talk to every founder. It's like, would you do it again? And it's like, no. Almost right, everyone says, sad. no, I would not do it yeah. again. If I knew everything I knew, I would not do it again. So, but you got to do it again. Well, I know. The, right? well, the, 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 those people shouldn't. They shouldn't. <laughs> right. So then don't. Right. right. Yeah. Don't. And, lay, and, lay and down. Right. We, <laughs> We were talking earlier where people said, Jesus, Alex, like, like, don't go back to advertising. You're going to ruin your legacy. Right. And, and, and you were talking about that in another way, just the, the maybe not through legacy, but just you think of yourself in such a way that it, that it, with age, you could build a, a barrier around trying again. You could build these barriers around trying again. It's totally false. It's bullshit. Yeah. Which is why that's where the blue guys came in. That because was like, the. That's what why could be harder and yeah. more exposing yeah. than to be on a stage. I think it's it's destiny for you to do a brand like this because the to go from having a startup, selling the startup, and then start saying, "I want to," I'm watching a guy play bluegrass. I'm so inspired that I'm going to learn to play bluegrass mm -hmm. to the point where I can tour. That mm -hmm. I'm going to like. It's fairly. I just keep coming up with the word impossible. Like, it feels like, well, that's an impossible mission at your age. That's what I would have said to you. I would have said, Tim, yeah. that's an impossible mission at your age, which is terrible advice. I apologize <laughs> for even saying it now. I'm hurt. Okay. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but, you di but you did that. Because of that very reason. Yeah. Because it does and it should seem impossible. I mean, and, and that's overstating it, but it's... Um, it's it's the walls that we mentally create for ourselves yeah. that are the worst. And as we get older, they just get bigger because of all of our checklists that we make for ourselves. Right. And ego. I mean, if there's something. Yeah. We were talking about legacy and I said, well, the, the earth is going to spin into the sun. We're all going to die. Everyone would know we're going to die. Our kids are going to die. Like. There's there's nothing to be worried about. Like no one is gonna remember me. I just like so, uh, and so get you're gonna remember me. Well, until you die. Like, no, it, but so your point was like so just get get after it, right? Um, do what you want to do. I find it very liberating yes. that very dark vision of the end of the universe. For some reason, it's liberating for me, and yeah. you find it similar in a, in a similar way, liberating, right? Yeah, you should recognize death for its ability to get you off your ass right now. Because we're not here for a long time. No. So, uh, you know, we, you got to do something with it. And don't, like the ego, it, your ego and everything you are and everything that you care about, all that's going away too. So get off, for, for me, right. so get off your ass. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, it's it's funny that we touched upon the ego thing because uh, it's it's amazing how the more that I read or people who I meet who think certain things are impossible, yeah, like it's just uh, it's it's just egos uh, that are guarding things that are not to be guarded. It's kind of a weird weird juxtaposition with branding something about aging. And then the truth that potentially one of the biggest enemies of aging the right way is your ego. Mm -hmm. Whereas a brand could feed ego, yet this is a brand that it has to, in some ways, it's about, I hope you didn't make one of those things and I hope it's not holding you back. Mm -hmm. I hope you're still willing to like look good in your readers. Right. You know? Right. But it, it's more of a self-reflection of, a personal identity. So, so you shouldn't hit a certain age and then, uh, and then, you know, all of a sudden throw away your personal style. Okay. So it's the same that you, you're just bringing it along for the ride. I want to, uh, kind of segue a little bit that 
one of the um, folks that um, watches the show sent in a bunch of ads that he had done. I guess he's faced ageism in his own career. And so he did this campaign. Mm -hmm. So they essentially just have headlines about people who achieve things later in life. So how old do you think Colonel Sanders was when he started his thing? You may know this because you're 70. an expert. 62. Which is, I, I thought that was, because I guess anybody older than me is really old. You know? So I was like, man, dude, like, way to go. And he barely got to enjoy it. He was able to have like three bites and then he passed. <laughs> um, I don't know about that. He, I'm sure he lived a long time. Uh, so, so Mark Mole did this. Uh, Hunt, Walter Hunt patented the safety pin at 53. Pretty good. I mean, it's a, it's a damn nice invention. Young I buck. use them all the time for my diapers still. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, the tape's not really sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, this one I didn't know. Charles Flint founded IBM at 61. Wow. Wow. Back in the 50s or 60s? Uh, it's the turn of the said. century. No. It was a business machine. It would have been 30s, I think. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Because they were like adding machines. Oh. At age uh, 50, um, Jack Cover created the, you'll never get this, taser. So you can also be violent later in life. <laughs> uh, yeah. Grandma Moses had her first painting hung in a museum, and she was 79. Julia Child started filming The French Chef when she was 51. Wow. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. But, I, but I, like you said, wow. And I said, wow. And I think that's the whole point of the um, campaign. And that bugs me. Yeah. That there's something obviously broken about our culture that we go through these and we say, wow. It's unfortunate. It's happening in tech too. Silicon Valley, if you're over 40, it's tough to get investment. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of everywhere. So, old people rule. Well, and, <laughs> people and, need to stand up and start showing it. And, and and I like these are anecdotes, and anecdotes don't really tell a story, you know. And we treat it. I think our reaction is very anecdotal, like, well, well, that's outside the norm, for one thing. But I have a feeling it's really not that outside the norm. That more of this is happening all the time, and lots of not famous companies are started by people that are, you know, mm -hmm. um, a lot older. A lot of great artists do things later in life. I think that's a, it's a, it's a pretty. There's no, there's really, there's really nothing to debate. Like, do older people do awesome things? It's like, yeah, like for a long time now. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's more of a rediscovery, maybe. Well. And the gatekeepers aren't so quick to put that demographic in in media or on TV. You know, yeah. it's it's changing now because you know of online content. Um, but when things were uh, hyper scrutinized of what people will see or not see, uh, there's just no platform. They're telling me I got to end the show. I could go another hour. This is really fun. <laughs> um, I want to thank you guys for coming on. Thanks for having us. Welcome to the Woodshed.